Now the TCA cycle is amphibolic. Amphibolic. This means that it can be used both it, it you can form TCA cycles, uh, TCA intermediates by breaking stuff down, or uh, you can use these uh, products. So, you, for example, breaking down pyruvate can form uh, oxaloacetate or malate, or breaking down of isoleucine, methionine, and um, uh, tyrosine can form uh, succinyl CoA. So over here I could just draw an arrow to succinyl CoA and I could put um, an I isoleucine or methionine or valine and those can all be broken down to produce succinyl CoA but at the same time succinyl CoA can be used to build up uh, porphyrins or heme Another uh, slightly lesser or more odd thing is that odd chain, odd chain, I don't know why I wrote ODLD, it's ODD, odd chain fatty acids, can be broken down to produce succinyl CoA. Now, fumarate, although it's not listed on here, it would be right here, fumarate, it goes right between uh, actually from su succinyl CoA to succinate to fumarate. To malate, so right in this area, it can um, it can be produced from uh, asp asparagine, uh, phenylalanine, or tyrosine. And you can see all the things listed. So, for example, oxaloacetate can be used to make aspartate, asparagine, and uh, pyrimidines. And so we can make pyrimidine nucleic acids, and over here, alpha ketoglutarate can be used to make purines from glutamate. You can also make other amino acids such as glutamine, proline, and arginine. And then from oxaloacetate, uh, through the first step of uh, gluconeogenesis, is um, reaction with uh, phosphenylpyruvate carboxylase to, to produce PEP. Uh, of course, you can go back up to glucose, or you can come down and make any of these amino acids. And so because it can go up or down, this is called an amphibolic, this is an amphibolic cycle. Most of the intermediates can go uh, be uh, produced by breaking stuff down, and they can also be used as intermediates to build stuff back up. Now I want to introduce you to another word, and that word is anapleretic. Ana Pleuretic. Now, I, this is um, actually the part where I've seen different spellings. So the spelling in our uh, notes is um, E U and uh, R O T I C, whereas the spelling I've seen other places crosses out that U. Anapleurotic. An anapleurotic just means you're breaking, uh, you're 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 creating intermediates for the TCA cycle. So there's uh, something else called catapleurotic, so catapleurotic, and that means I'm using uh, these intermediates such as succinyl CoA to make something, so I'm, I'm losing TCA cycle intermediates with catapleurotic reactions. Anapleurotic reactions, I'm making TCA cycle intermediates. So for example, from citrate to produce a cholesterol, would be catapleurotic, whereas in this reaction is completely reversible. So using glutamate to produce alpha ketoglutarate, it would be anapleurotic. So amphibolic just tells you that it moves in two directions metabolically, and anapleurotic and catapleurotic kind of tell you whether I'm adding to intermediates or taking away from intermediates. Now pyruvate is actually um, special because it can provide TCA intermediates. It has three anapleurotic pathways. So it can go to acetyl-CoA through by reacting with coenzyme A with pyruvate dehydrogenase. And then uh, acetyl-CoA um, will combine with oxaloacetate and uh, it will form citrate. 
On the other hand, pyruvate can uh, react with pyruvate carboxylase and CO2 to form uh, axaloacetate. So pyruvate carboxylase, PC, uh, and CO2 will produce oxaloacetate directly. And then, on the other hand, so uh, imagine citrate, it goes through several steps and you get to alpha ketoglutarate, alpha ketoglutarate, I'm just going to put GLU. Now if you have a glutamate present, glutamate, and you don't have enough alpha ketoglutarate, then this can actually form, uh, it'll actually, what will happen is it will produce alanine, alanine, and it will react with the glutamate to produce alpha ketoglutarate. So this kind of, I kind of drew this funky. So let me try one more time. So this is glutamate, glutamate, and it's going to produce alpha ketoglutarate by reacting with with pyruvate which produces alanine and I believe the enzyme involved in that is alpha ketoglutarate, alpha ketoglutarate transamination or something or maybe alanine transamination and this is one of the main enzymes in the in the liver function test so if you remember the liver function test uh, or the liver function labs that you do with uh, clinical uh, based stuff. If you're looking for liver damage, if you see any of this stuff in the blood serum, it typically isn't in the blood serum in any kind of um, high concentration. So if you see that in, in the blood, then you know that there's probably some damage or some inflammation of the liver. Now of uh, clinical importance is what happens if you have a deficiency of pyruvate carboxylase? You won't get oxaloacetate produced in a very high concentration, and so whenever it's being used to create other things such as amino acids and pyrimidines, then you're not going to have enough of it to run the citric acid cycle because it's not being replenished. And you, you may say, well, what about the uh, beta oxidation of fatty acids? What about breaking down fatty acids? And that can't work because fatty acids uh, get broken down straight into acetyl-CoA. They don't get made into pyruvate. They become acetyl-CoA. That's important because acetyl-CoA has two carbons. And those two carbons, as you can see, if we follow through the cycle, um, we give up one of those carbons right here and then uh, we and then the second CO2 is given off the second carbon is given off right there so all of the carbons and in, in, from beta uh, beta oxidation of fatty acids all of the carbons that we add to this cycle get taken away as CO2 and so you never actually generate any extra oxaloacetate because by the time you get back around to here you've already used up all of the carbons that you added to the system. So you can't regenerate an oxaloacetate from fatty acids. There is one exception though. A very rare type of fatty acid called an odd chain, an odd chain fatty acid can be converted into succinyl CoA. And so one of those uh, that's used pharmaceutically, an odd chain fatty acid is called uh tri Hep, uh, triheptanoin and this is a uh, a triglyceride and each of the chains of the triglyceride have seven carbons so instead of having six or eight or ten or twelve it has seven seven which being an odd number means it can become succinyl coa and therefore regenerate oxaloacetate interestingly triheptanoin is also used uh, to um, help treat a carnitine shuttle deficiency. So CPT2 deficiencies are um, partially treated with uh, increased L-carnitine as well as triheptanoin. So a bit a different mechanism involved there.